The blind stares of a million pairs of eyes Looking hard but won't realize that they will never see the P <laughs> Ten slave codes that were designed to oppress and humiliate black people. Enslaved blacks and Africans did not readily accept slavery. There were many uprisings where white settlers were slain or injured in the South and North. Plantation owners were fearful for their lives from a violent rebellion, so much so that they came together to create what they call slave codes a succession of laws, some different by colony, that restricted enslaved people's behavior to control their actions and reduce the chances of an uprising. Rejecting slavery, a crime punishable by death. Since the slave codes were inspired by the fear of blacks, it's not surprising that the most cruel and inhumane punishments were reserved for those who most rejected slavery. Attempting to raise an insurrection meant certain torture and death. But capital punishment was used for even lesser acts of resistance, such as destroying any stacks of rice, corn, or other grain, or setting fire to any tar barrels of pitch, turpentine, or rosin. Free slaves who harbored escapees would be beaten by the slave's owner and fined. No rights to bear arms or self-defense. Blacks were prohibited from possessing weapons or lifting a hand against any white person, even in self-defense. If caught carrying a gun, the enslaved will receive 39 lashes with a whip and forfeit his weapon. In some places, even free blacks couldn't carry a gun. Eerily, similar to how the police violence is protected by the laws of today. Resisting the violence of a slave holder or overseer granted him the right to kill that enslaved person without fear of prosecution, much like what is going on today with the police. Legal imbalance. An enslaved person accused of a crime, any crime against a white person, was akin to a death sentence, or worse. There was only one side of the story presented in a court of law, and it was not the enslaved persons. And the juries, of course, were all white. A black enslaved man accused of raping a white woman would almost always be put to death or castrated, while for white men, it was open season on the black woman's body. Travel restrictions. Enslaved people could travel only with written permission from their masters. And any slave or black person in bondage attempting to run away or leave the colony, later state, was subject to the death penalty. In the South, those who evaded capture for 20 days or more would be publicly whipped for the first offense branded with the letter R on the right cheek for the second offense, lose an ear for the third offense, and castrated for the fourth offense. Elsewhere in the Americas, similar cruel punishments were inflicted on blacks, such as the cutting of hamstrings and the splitting of noses. In many places, enslaved blacks who ran away and refused to surrender would be killed without penalty. Slave codes target skin, color, and gender. In the South from 1776 to 1861, blacks, mulattoes, mixed white and black background, Indians, and mestizos, mixed Indians with white parentage, were assumed to be slaves and were treated as such subject to all so-called slave codes. However, the U.S. institution progressed. The focus became the enslavement of blacks in particular. So laws were written to determine the status 
of human beings by skin color and the status of their mother. In Virginia, for example, only a free woman could have free offspring. But if a free white woman tied the knot with an enslaved black man, she had to become the property of her husband's master. Blacks could be owned, but couldn't own a thing. Enslaved blacks were not allowed to own property, as they were considered property. To have ownership of something, even their own name, would be empowering. And the plantation owners were adamant about suppressing any feelings of self-esteem. The same as what is taking place today. No congregating of black people. The slave codes prohibited the enslaved from assembling without a white person present for fear they might organize or express support to each other. Blacks were prohibited from reading and writing. In a peculiarly debilitating move, whites made it illegal for the enslaved to read or write. Anyone operating a school or teaching reading and writing to any African American in Missouri could be punished by a fine of not less than $500 or up to six months in jail, especially in the South. So-called Christian values made the Bible the only exception to the no slaves reading laws. <laughs>